Wide and one for the intelligent as fellas get Listen, let's settle this, be clear I could fall back seven years Still it ain't no one ahead of me Consider it a blessing if you get to stand next to me Five star general, OG veteran What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Well, a couple of hours ago, I put up a uh, post on Instagram. Erin um, actually sent me a screenshot when she was at work of um, breaking news. And, of course, it's not breaking news to the whole fucking world. Some people are not going to care. But Prince's um, death was ruled as an overdose to the drug fentanyl. Now, why, is, why am I talking about fentanyl? Why am I talking about Prince? Well, first of all, it doesn't necessarily have to do with Prince in general. It is more of the fentanyl thing. Now... Fentanyl seems to be a drug that, I mean, my father was prescribed it when he was going through cancer treatment. It was a patch. And the pat, my mom stuck the patch on it and it basically almost fucking knocked him out within 10 minutes. His body reacted to so quickly that his eyes rolled into his head and he had like the nods. They had to get the patch off him and get it out of his system for him to be okay. It's super strong stuff. My ex, like five ex-girlfriends ago, when we were involved in the drugs, used to take the patches and cut them, squeeze the gel out, eat the gel and get high from the gel. It's a super powerful opiate. Um, as far as I know, it is the most powerful opiate out there. It's measured in micrograms and not milligrams, which means that it's strong shit. Now, why is there, why are we having a video about fentanyl? Well, apparently, not just what I'm hearing from family and friends in general, but now I'm seeing it on the news, etc. Fentanyl seems to be a huge problem. When Aaron and I went to uh, Mexico this year, one of the pharmacists actually said, do you want fentanyl? And I was like, the patches? Like, I just, I was caught off guard. And he's like, no, and he pulls out a bottle of pills. And I don't believe what the milligram was or the microgram dose. I think I believe it was one milligram pills, honestly, or 500 microgram pills. And I was like, that's a lot. So what are people, why would they want these? This is really strong. So now they crush them up and put them in other things. And just kind of, I was like, what the fuck? It didn't dawn on me what was really going on. Philip Seymour Hoffman, the actor from, um, he was in Mission Impossible, the, the blonde haired guy, kind of heavy set, had a heroin addiction. Now, what people don't know a lot right now, and I just talked to my younger brother, Justin, about this last month when I was back home in Rhode Island. They take the fentanyl and they crush up the pills themselves and they lace the heroin with it. And it's happening all over the country right now. And the problem is they don't really know how much they're putting in these bags of heroin. And people are overdosing on them left and right. They're causing respiratory shutdown and they're killing themselves with this shit. And Philip Seymour Hoffman had actually went out and bought a bunch of heroin. I believe it was two... Um, bricks which was or a brick whatever it was a lot of bags of heroin and when the police got in and found him in his apartment dead they found two bags open one needle and all the rest of the stuff still packaged up which mean that he basically didn't buy it to sell it he bought it to start a bender and never actually got to start the bender because of the fact that he had overdosed on the first shot which means that they were fucking super strong drugs correct right well they found out that they were sprinkled heroin uh fentanyl inside the heroin that's what did him in now we see prince dying of fentanyl now, you know, that's just two stars in the last couple of years that, you know, have been linked to fentanyl overdose, which is an opiate overdose. But I was back home, like I said, I was talking to my brother. I went to visit my mom before she started her cancer treatments last month. And um, I said, he said, man, everybody's telling me that pills, you know, nothing is, heroin pills, it's getting really fucking bad up here. And he's like, you don't even understand how bad it is, honestly. And this is like Warren, Rhode Island, Riverside, Rhode Island. These are small towns in like the smallest state on the fucking enti entire map. If you look at Rhode Island, it's like a speck. Like, you can't even find it, really. And these towns are flooded with these opiates. And he said that um, a friend of his had overdosed on the fentanyl that was in the heroin, was passed out on his floor. Someone called for, like, a wellness check. The police couldn't get in there, but they could see through the window and saw him laying on the floor. They entered the house. They tried to revive him. He was still alive. His respiration was going down. Found a couple of bags or whatever it was. Figured it was an opiate. Gave him the Narcan shot, and the kid came to, and was like, what are you doing in my house? The cops were like, this is, they were trying to explain to him, like, you were overdosing? He said, I was just taking a nap. He didn't even realize that he was overdosing on the floor. Like, that's how strong this shit is. So now you have this stuff making its way into, you know, the general population with people that, you know, first of all, you're buying a bag of heroin. You don't even really know what the dosage of the morphine conversion is in it. You don't even know how much you're getting. So, you, you know, you're looking at, I do a bag. How much is in a bag? Drug dealers don't weigh those fucking bags out. You don't know how many milligrams you're taking. Now, if they're taking the raw powder of the heroin and they're sprinkling fentanyl in it, just kind of mixing it up and putting it all in the bags, you can be getting very whopping doses of fentanyl inside each bag of heroin that when you shoot that one bag of heroin, it's like fucking 10 bags of heroin 
and it shuts your respiratory system down, it shuts your brain down, and you fucking die. And the problem is, is it happens so fast that you really can't stop it. Like, you just think, oh, wow, I'm really high, I'm cozy, I'm going to take a little nap. And next thing you know, you're fucking dead. So, you know, when Aaron sent me that thing about Prince now, and, you know, they were said, well, you know, he did have an ailment, da 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 he had some kind of pain or whatever. Pain in my ass, okay? I've seen fentanyl firsthand, how strong it is. No doctor is going to prescribe you that type of pain medication unless you have something so seriously wrong with you that you're not really active. You're going to be sitting in a fucking chair somewhere, and it's going to be very regulated and very dosed properly to make sure that you don't fucking kill yourself. I'm not saying that he was doing it illegally, but what I'm saying is, you know, people are not understanding how strong this drug is. It's basically like a fucking joke right now. You know, people don't even fentanyl, whatever. No, it's fucking killing people left and right. And how it's hitting the market, these companies that produce fentanyl, they know. They know for a fact that this shit is not selling to places that actually use it for medicine. They're sending it to other countries like Mexico, etc., where it can be bought legally over the counter. And the fucking sales are probably in the billions of dollars. It's a super dangerous drug. No hospitals in America are prescribing those fucking fentanyl pills for someone who's walking around with fucking hip pain. They have Oxycontin, they have fucking Percocet, they have Vicodin, they have Hydrocodone, Oxycodone, they have all these other things. Tramadol, Toradol, they have all these other things. They're not giving fentanyl out in these, you know, fucking large microgram dose pills legally to people that need it. It's making its way out the back door and back in the country from other countries and falling out the back door in some of these pharmacies and shit. And the way that it was so easily available in... Um, in you know Mexico, let's say just for a fact, let's say I took it in Mexico, I bought it and I brought it home, and I hadn't used any of it. I'm like, oh, it's just fentanyl, and I gave a couple to my buddies. You know, they're 500 microgram dose or whatever the fuck they were. You only need a 20 microgram dose. You give them a 500 microgram pill, say I'll take one of these. It'll fucking have a beer with it. It'll make you feel good. You pop one of these because you're thinking it's like a Vicodin, because people kind of draw that comparison like it's like a Vicodin, it's like an Oxycontin. It is the new Oxycontin, but it's deadly as fuck because it's so strong, so powerful, and shuts you down so quick. That, you know, they don't use this shit unless you really have, like, you have terminal cancer. Like, you're going to die anyways. They'll give you this stuff in a patch. And they gave it to my dad, but, like, you know, he was really fucking bad off. And it was like, they gave him morphine first. My dad was taking liquid morphine, shots of liquid morphine, and uh, he was drinking it. And when the morphine didn't work, they were like, look, you need to stick the patch on after the morphine no longer works. So this stuff was stronger than the actual fucking straight liquid morphine that they were giving my dad. And I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what the answer is. Education, as long as people want to get high, it's going to be around. They're going to use it. You know, the the mindset of an, a drug addict is, oh, fuck, Joe down the street overdosed on that fucking brand. I'm going to go get that brand, too. Where did you get it from? I want the good stuff. Like, that's the mindset of these people. And the drug dealers know it. They know if they spike it a little bit, a few people are going to fucking drop. People are going to come buy their products. They're not going to spike it for a while. They're going to realize they're not getting the spike product. They're going to stop. They're going to spike it again and say, hey, we got another batch back in. People are going to die. This product is going to kill people for a very long time unless people wise the fuck up and respect it for what it is. And they fucking clamp down and tighten up on regulations of how this shit is hitting the fucking streets. I mean, you know, heroin was a bad thing when I was using it back 15 years ago. But it wasn't plentiful. It wasn't all over the place. You had to search to find it. Nowadays, from what I understand, every fucking Tom, Dick, and Harry... Fucking who's 18 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old, doesn't even fucking matter. Everybody has access to this shit now. And it's flooded the fucking streets. And one of the, the theories is that marijuana being legal, it's now forcing the criminal element to kind of funnel, okay, we're not making money from marijuana anymore like we were. We need to funnel into these other harder drugs to hit the street. And they're pushing these other things and they're getting them on the street and people are using them. So I don't know what the answer is, but be aware, guys. The fentanyl stuff. Anything with fentanyl. Super fucking dangerous. Super potent. And can fucking kill you without you even noticing it. You know, you won't even notice it. You'll take it and then just fucking... you go to sleep and that's it. You're done. So be aware if you find... I don't know what they look like. I don't really know much about them at all. As far as, you know, these pills that are around. But if you find some pills in your kids' pockets, in their fucking drawer, wherever the fuck it is, there's an app that you can get on your phone. It's called Pill Identifier, Pill Finder, whatever it is. It's for parents who find pills and shit in their kids' fucking, you know, pockets and stuff. Identify some of the shit, get it away from your kids, and if so many of you guys right now have fucking issues with addiction and you know problems with this stuff, just fucking get help. Biosetraining at gmail.com, leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biosetraining.com is a vlog, it's the no fucking fentanyl bicep, and we're out.